Hi, and welcome to SketchUp tutorial for beginners, specially tailored for architecture. So once you have launched your SketchUp applications, you would be greeted with this welcome screen where you could start from default templates created by uh, SketchUp, or you could open existing SketchUp files, or open recently opened files. You could also click on learn to be able to access online learning resources, again provided by SketchUp. You could also check your license here, especially for subscription. But for this overview for SketchUp, let's go back to files. And we always start with a template. Now, uh, regarding template, that depends on the type of model that you're going to make. It depends heavily on its complexity. So once I click on more templates, it showcases different templates tailored for a specific uses. So for architecture, you could use either inches if you are in countries using English system but mostly we'll be using metric system from millimeters, centimeters to meters. That is for architecture because you will be modeling buildings or details of buildings. For urban planning, it starts with a minimum of feet or meter. For landscape, you could have inches and meters because also you could provide details for landscape. In woodworking, such as, for example, furnitures, you need to be more detailed in your models. That's why minimum here or maximum is inches and minimum is millimeters. Now, since in architecture or in our projects, we shall be modeling both the building as a whole, including its interior details, then it's much more appropriate to use millimeters. So go ahead and click on Architectural Millimeters as our starting template for this tutorial. And so we have the simplistic interface of SketchUp. Starting from the top, you have the title bar. Once you save your drawing, your drawing title will appear, of course, in this title bar. Followed by the menu bar containing the different tools and settings as well as commands available for you in SketchUp and the toolbar you may have a different toolbar especially if you just opened your SketchUp for the first time and you can change that under the view menu and then choose toolbars so you could uh, toggle on or off different toolbars available for you in SketchUp but for beginners, start first with the basic. So what you may have is the getting started toolbar with the condensed form of the different tools for the toolbar. So currently, I have the large tool set. And I suggest you do the same. So uncheck getting started and check large tool set. It provides you most of the icons that you're going to use in modeling your projects. So once checking that, just close it for the meantime. And at the bottom part of the interface, you have, of course, the status bar where it contains the model info. You could check that your template is using, of course, millimeters. You could also access that here in the window. And then... Model info, the same. And of course, geotagging or geolocation. But in this case, uh, you can only add location if you have signed in your, to your SketchUp account. But of course, you could always set manual location to have a much more accurate shadow casting. At the middle part of the status bar, displays prompts or tips suited for the 
currently selected tool. So currently, the select tool is current tool and these are the different prompt and tips to use the tool appropriately. In the rightmost part of the status bar is the measurement box where you could input values in order to be accurate in your models. It also displays the measurements of the current entity you are creating. And in the right pane of your interface is the default tray containing different panels. So we have entity info panel. You could uh, collapse or expand that by clicking on this arrow. And we shall be talking about them in the later parts of the tutorial. But for beginners, I suggest and recommend that the instructor panel should always be opened and displayed because it provides you or teaches you visually on how to properly execute the tool and use it on your models. It also provides you descriptions and procedures in using the selected or current tool. It also provides you different ways to modify the command in order to extend the functionality of every tool selected. And of course, the most exciting part of the interface is the drawing area, where we are greeted with a 2D cutout of a person named as, you could check the information here under Entity Info Panel, uh, named as Laura for this version of 